There's a marriage in Bakugan, but it's not the type that you think. Hello brothers and welcome to my review of episode 16 of Evolutions. I'm Haru Ren, so spoiler warning, if you haven't seen this episode yet, go back and watch it now. But if you have, sit back, relax, and enjoy my review of Evolutions episode 16. So we begin with the perfect marriage. So this takes place at a Cubbo's pizza place. Okay, first problem, if you're going to put Cubbo on the front side of your pizza place, I better expect this to be direct competition to Chuck E. Cheese's or something. Also, why do I feel like this is Spin Master's attempt at getting a sponsorship with Little Caesars? If this pizza place does not have have a pizza delivery guy dressed in a cowboy costume? Uh, I don't know what you're doing, okay? Marriage in this case means two separate things combined to form one awesome new thing. Oh. Oh, thank God. I thought we were going the Leah and Lord Creepy route. But it is actually true that marriage in this context is just combining two different things into one some one thing. So it turns out the pizza shop owner and even other businesses in the area are being threatened by Sun17 Security to sell their property to Janssen Tech to build a facility. The same company trying to sabotage Shun's company and the same security company that shouldn't stop from destroying his factories. Okay, I don't know what kind of facility that Jetson Tech is trying to build that they require all of this land. Like, apparently they're threatening like so much other businesses to the point where other businesses are staging a large protest. So the amount of land that they're buying is like massive. I don't know what they expect their bill with that thing. But everyone who's refused to sell has met a terrible fate. Jesus, this got dark real fast. This guy is in an accident because he refused to sell his business, and the way the guys went into the pizza store making vague threats at Lou gave me Godfather vibes. This episode probably had to dumb down the violence of the car wreck for PG purposes, but this really reads like a mafia film. So the mobsters are back, and they brought the president of Sun17 Security in a really long limo with them. You know, if you have a limo that long, it usually means that you're trying to make up for something. I'm just saying. Turns out the president of Sun17 Security is McHugh. I thought he was in jail and now he's the president of a security company? That's quite a leap. Sean and Energy tried to stop McHugh, but Cycloid turns out has become elemental. If we can get this in a toy form, that would be great. And of course, McHugh cheats and uses a gravity device to handicap Feral and Hydras, so they go into strength mode to fight the gravity. Using gravity devices seems in line with McHugh's character, and the fight itself is actually pretty interesting to watch since there are consequences of losing the pizza place that they lose. And keeping with the theme of combining two things together, Farrell and Hydras uses blinding and power to disable the drones. Uh, how dare you do that to me! McHugh just throws his phone away like that, but where did he throw it in a way that would make this kind of noise? Cycloid, dodge him! I guess Cycloid's definition of dodging them is jumping towards them and shunning the jeep pulverize them. Yeah! Now that's what I call an excellent marriage! You know, this is just adding fuel to Bakugan out of context. So McHugh gets arrested for violent extortion, and I guess Sun-17 security is shut down? And Shun and Ajit's bravery actually inspires Lou and other businesses to protest against Jansen Tech, making Jansen Tech stop the land bio because of the PR nightmare that will ensue. I actually really enjoyed this more than I ought to have, because now without Sun-17 security, maybe the rat will finally come out of the sewers and we get Shun facing off against Jansen Tech's president head on in the future. So the next part we get is Judge's Rule. Athena is admiring Kamen flowers that Mr. Barnstable planted, but Lightning is digging up the flower bed to bury his bones and so Mr. Barnstable is chasing him with a broom trying to hit Lightning with it. Dude, I know that Lightning sabotaged their flowers, but this borders on animal abuse. Mr. Barnstable accidentally hits the headmaster in the face, causing him to go tumbling down the stairs and as a result, Mr. Barnstable is fired. No offense, my guy, but if you're going to be chasing a student around attempting to whack him with a broom, uh, I, you kinda deserved it in all honesty. So Coach Short introduces Mr. Barnstable's replacement, Sergeant Slaughter! Actually, this is Mr. Judge, voiced by Ron Pardo, who, like Coach Short, needlessly punishes the students and turns the academy into a worse boot camp than it already is. No wonder Coach Short hired him. My cynical side tells me that they're related or something. My Army Sergeant wannabe analysis of Coach Short last episode somehow made it its own character. I... I blame myself. I really don't know why Mr. Barnstable is still hanging around the academy after he's been fired. Does he have another position at this academy or something? Mr. Judge crushes Mr. Barnstable's flowers, which makes him irritated. Yeah, you can torture the students, try to destroy the academy's image, cr but crushing my flowers? Now that crosses the line. Nobody messes with another man's flowers. 
So Lightning challenges Mr. Judge to a battle and a plan to get him fired. The plan apparently involves battling him without the drone. Mr. Judge and Clock Tower chase Lightning and Halcor all over the academy, which is extremely dangerous and irresponsible since the drone isn't up. And their battle ends up destroying Coach Shorts' truck! Jesus! I don't think insurance is gonna cover that! You know, with all the crap that Coach Short puts on the Academy, this is funny to watch. What's worse, really? Chasing lightning with a broom, or chasing lightning with a destructive monster? I gotta admit, this was entertaining. Lightning beats up Mr. Judge's clock tour, Coach Short fires him for destroying his truck. You are... FIRED! You're fired! Oh, baby! And wow, it turns sunset really fast. The students rally and support Mr. Barnstable, and Coach Short reinstates him as the episode ends on a heartwarming note. So, that was episode 17. Let me know what your rating of the show was in the comments down below. So, this episode was quite entertaining to watch. Sure, it was filler, but the first part, the basis of it, was practically inspired by Mafia films, and it had a development for the subplot regarding Shun's feud with Jets and Tech, giving us more substance to follow it as it progresses later on. The second part, while there wasn't that much to talk about, it was still engaging and fun to watch with the end result of the bad guy getting his ass fired, and Coach Short, a guy we don't like, getting his truck destroyed. I smell a lawsuit coming, actually. I, it gave us a satisfying ending, and overall, this was decent to watch. I can't say I was bored watching this all go down, so I'm gonna give this a Baku good. This was a pretty good episode. Can't believe it! Thank you for watching this review of Evolutions. Be sure to press the like button and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren, and thank God for Rapid Fire. Bye!